Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Charles, and I have another video here for the amateur radio community. Uh, some of you have seen the video that I had put together for our field day this past year, uh, operating as K4NN uh, down in Virginia. And uh, I had used uh, the ladder tower that I had mounted on a trailer uh, years ago, 30 years ago. And I had made that ladder tower to support a homemade uh, full-size uh, 20 meter beam uh, monobander for field day. And, uh, and it worked very well. However, this past summer at K4NN, one of the fellows brought a hex beam. And uh, he put that thing together, I picked it up, and uh, it was really light. I just couldn't believe how light it was, and it performed really well. So I thought, do I really need a heavy ladder tower to, uh, to, to uh, put an antenna up in the air? Um, I thought that maybe I could build something out of telescoping aluminum tubing and mount it on the hitch of my car and use it for a VHF contest or Pennsylvania QSO party as a rover or something like that. And uh, I thought we, it could, uh, this could be a possibility. So that's what this video is about, making a telescoping mass uh, into a tower that I can mount on the back of my car without a lot of expense. So I got excited about this idea of uh, building a telescoping mast, and I called up uh, the uh, local metal distributor that does fabrication, sells fabrication metals, and they had three inch square aluminum, eighth inch wall uh, in 24 foot lengths, uh, three inch square, and uh, for $123. And they sold two and a half, a two and a half uh, square tubing uh, for uh, $89 or something like that. And so, uh, so we, uh, uh, I brought that home on the roof of my car, which was pretty long. And, uh, and then I cut a, a, uh, a slot in the, uh, smaller tube and and uh, put a pulley here so that I can crank it up in the air uh, once uh, it's in an upright position. So this is the tower and how do I mount things on top of this tower? That's the question. Obviously this thing is just mounted on top of my car and that's only what about six feet high, uh, six and a half feet high and a spider beam uh, to mount it uh, it, it's quite gangly. In other words, its uh, radius is 15 feet. For instance. So how would I mount a beam on a mast that I need to raise from a, a six and a half foot level? I saw this from some uh, videos that I've seen from other people that have mounted uh, spider beams on a tower then raised them. And uh, so I, I have a, this uh, inch and a half mast, inch and a half mast that uh, whatever that supports the uh, spider beam would uh, would uh, would slide inside this, so we could rotate it manually with a rope. And then, as we raise this thing, we could mount it horizontally while it's resting on the car, the roof of the car, and and then uh, use this rope to pull it vertically as as we pull it up in the air. So that's uh, the way I plan to use it to raise a beam. Now on the other hand, uh, I would like to use this for a vertical antenna. It's, it's uh, very easy to insert a two inch uh, telescoping aluminum. And I, all I need is one additional 24, 26 feet and I can have uh, 80 meter be, uh, vertical or and add a wire for 160. So uh, just put a couple bolts in here and extend it another um, 24, 26 feet for an 80 meter vertical. And I think uh, it could be uh, rather versatile for temporary antennas. So that's uh, my plan for the top of the tower. Now we need to see how this thing would mount on a car and raise it up on a car 
And then after that, we'll put it on a post and raise it up for a vertical. Okay, I'd like to show you this uh, contraption that I made now to support this square mast because the eighth inch uh, aluminum is a little weak to take the seesaw tension that is required to lift a 14 pound weight at the end of 20 feet. I thought this steel uh, cradle, we can rest the aluminum uh, square in this steel cradle and just uh, swing it up there. And then to uh, crank up the height, we would just use uh, a boat crank to, uh, to winch to pull, pull it up. So uh, it's pretty solid. I think it'll hold, and if we guy the first section of tower and then the section, second section of tower, it should work out pretty well. The weight is uh, resting on an extension from the uh, class 3 hitch here. So uh, we'll see how it works. See if this thing can raise this thing. So that works pretty nice. Now we have to clamp it at the bottom and and then we'll pull the top up. We'll see how that works. First, we'll uh, tie a few ropes here. Okay, this cradle is inside these two by fours on either side, so it gives it kind of support back and forth. And now we'll release this uh, cable and we'll tie onto that cable to pull the top up. That's up about 44 feet. The orange uh, paint is uh, the 40 foot mark. And so that thing's up about 44 feet up there. So now it's time to take this thing down, take it off the car, and see if we can mount it on a post in my backyard. I have this post in the backyard tucked in between a tree and, a, and the barn so that it's rather inconspicuous. And uh, the post is going to be permanent so that I can put it up anytime I want. But uh, the antenna, of course, will come and go. So uh, first of all, we need to mount the, the carriage or the contraption <laughs> that is used to uh, raise the tower. We just hang it on uh, that post with those brackets and tighten up the bolts and it's good to go.
I think the tubes weigh about uh, 40 pounds each, maybe 30 pounds. So uh, the whole thing weighs about 70 pounds. So it's nice that just one person can uh, mount this uh, if you take your time and are a little bit careful. So once it's in the cradle, then I can add the brackets to uh, fasten it, uh, to t tie it to the cradle. And that takes the stress when you pull it and crank it up. And now we're going to add the vertical antenna. Now this, this is the real antenna that we're putting together here today. Um, this is the first part. We put a couple bolts in there. I squeezed this little eighth inch piece of wood in there to force it against the, <clears throat> the square so that I have good electrical connection for the antenna. And now we need to add the length. Since the uh, pole, the telescoping mast, is uh, around 40 foot tall, I was aiming for 66 feet total. So uh, we need to have, have an additional uh, 26 feet here to get to that point. Then we tie the ropes on and we're about ready to crank it up. As We'll crank it up, uh, tie off the first section, then raise the center section up to the 66 foot level. I used a quarter inch cable. Uh, I think it's around uh, 900 pound test level uh, cable to crank it up because that's actually quite a bit of weight at that end of the antenna when we, when we lift it up. But the center section is just eighth inch cable because it needs to go through that center slot. But it went up better than I thought it would. It actually uh, went up very nice. It's kind of windy, as you can tell. And uh, so I was eager to get the ropes tied on uh, before I would raise the center section. And we add the clamps just like on the car to hold it tight. I'd like to um, get something a little bit better on that uh, than just the clamps as I'm going to let it up here for about two weeks. Now we'll take the cable off the bottom and put it on to the top. Uh, top cable to raise the center mast. So now we raised it up to the, the 66 foot level. Uh, I have a little orange paint on the center mast to see when I get to the 40 foot level of the telescoping mast. And uh, it's kind of hard to see because I did grease it with that uh, copper grease that you use to uh, build uh, aluminum antennas. The hardest job is uh, spreading out all these radials. I have 24 60-foot uh, radials here, uh, insulated uh, 14 or number 12 wire. I used up all the wire I had, actually, and so that's why I stopped with um, 24 uh, radials. Be uh, but, um, but that's probably enough for a temporary installation like this. I got these transformers from Ballum Designs. Uh, this is their uh, Ballum 1115. It's made for 
resident antennas and uh, and since this is going to be a resident one band only antenna as of now um, uh, it works out real nice to connect to coax to the antenna I used uh, PVC to wrap this coil. This coil's kind of nice in that it also s serves like a hairpin um, match and it drains the static from the antenna to the ground uh, for any type of static buildup. Finally, we get to the exciting part when we can hook up an analyzer and test this antenna. And just as I'm doing that, my friend Dale Long, N3BNA, walks up behind me and surprises me with his own analyzer. I think someone should take a photo of the photographer. What do you think? That's amazing. <laughs> I think. Uh, just a little long, I'll have to drop it down a little bit. That, that's very good. 1.1 at the very bottom of the band. Well, I'll drop it down a foot. So, yeah, see, that's 34.75, and you really want it to be at, at 36.50 or something. Now, now we're okay. From the bottom band is 3,500. Wait a minute. 3500 is 1.3, 1.28, so 1.28 up to 3700 is 1.2, 1.3. So we're we're 1.2. You know, from the bottom of the band is the bottom 200 kc. Great, that's nice. 1.2, Jonathan. That's good. Yeah. So now it's time to uh, put this antenna on the air and see what it can do. The first thing I would like to do, um, I have uh, uh, two other antennas on 80 meters, which are my primary antennas. I have a dipole at around 55 feet and a uh, uh, 160 loop, um, about four, it varies between 40 and 50 feet, I guess it is. And so uh, they are my primary antennas. And so I thought I would compare those antennas with the vertical. And I was a bit surprised uh, when I put a signal on the air and, uh, and checked it on, uh, on the reverse beacon network. Uh, I, I saw that I had some interesting uh, results. My, uh, my vertical raised 11, European stations and uh, the dipole only raised one European station and the loop uh, only raised one European station. So I thought that was kind of significant that the vertical does give you lower um, horizontal radiation which allows one to uh, work further around the world on lower frequencies. So last night I got on the air for the first with this vertical antenna and uh, I was able to work uh, uh, 3 Bravo 8 Mexico for his uh, for my first contact and uh, here we'll just uh, look where he's at here on QRZ.com and uh, he's at the I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Mar Mar Maritus Island, I, I butchered that I'm sure, out in the Indian Ocean uh, beyond Madagascar off the coast of Africa. Now ordinarily uh, that's a little bit too impressive for uh, conditions must have been perfect because he was really loud here. So thanks again for your interest in watching this video. Uh, what I would like to do from here, I'd like to take a wire off the top of that antenna and use it for 160 and we'll see what that does. And then of course the primary purpose for this is to use it for like field day for portable locations using it as a tower and see if we can put a spider beam or hex beam up in the air with it. So, uh, so uh, we'll see how that develops. So I'll finish by saying 73s which means uh, best wishes to all of you.